70 laps of Budapest begin. Racing didn't see who he flipped over, but for sure a yellow flag. Um, I would imagine safety car on standby as well, although we haven't been told that. He seems to be well off the racetrack. A dramatic start then for Christian Clean and dramatic also for the two McLarens. They're exactly where they want to be, Mark, right behind Michael Schumacher. Yeah, but Schumacher already has pulled out a significant lead there. And the start was a little bit messed there. Christian Clean getting hooked up into uh, something quite, quite difficult. Alonso, I'm sorry, Mark. Alonso looks like he's damaged his front wing. He may even have lost part of it. Let's wait and see if he can go. Yeah, look at that. The left-hand side of his front wing. World Championship leader Fernando Alonso is in trouble on that one. Well, that's a big blow to him, James. They're going to have to come in and get that repaired immediately. It's going to get worse. He's going to start dropping back and holding a few people up behind him. But he can still maybe get that nose change, get on the back of the pack. And if there is a safety car, which is unlikely now, they look like they're recovering that car quite quickly, it'd be OK. Here it is again, then. You can see he gets down the inside of Ralph Schumacher. And that was the problem. And there's Clean. Yeah, he touched wheels there with one of the Salvers, and just unfortunately, Coulthard off as well. So it's a very bad day for Red Bull Racing indeed. He's got damage to his car, had a collision with somebody also. Two Red Bull Racings out in the course of a single lap. No sign of safety cars. Wave double yellow flags at turn one for the Clean incident. World Championship leader Alonso comes into the pits as Michael Schumacher leads after one lap. Raikkonen second, Montoya third, Trulli fourth. Looks like Barrichello is also into the pits. From fifth on the grid, what a dramatic opening lap here at Budapest. That's really shuffled the pack. Alonso is being told to get going now. Didn't see what they were doing with fuel on that, uh, whether they've changed their plans at all. But Alonso, we believe, carrying a reasonable slug of fuel anyway into this Grand Prix. So, two cars for sure out. Here's another look. Uh, Rubens just pushed himself into the back of the uh, Toyota Truly by the looks of it. That's caused some damage there. But this is a big issue as well, James. Look at the carbon fibre being laid onto the ground. That's going to cause a punch made with somebody clean over on the roll hoop. Luckily, he's OK. It's meant to just be there for protection. See, lots of bits of Renault body work. Oh, that's what he did. He did not have a simple spin. He knocked the front wheel off his car, hitting Alonso's wing. Yeah, there's nothing he can do about that. If you've got carbon fibre and a wing the size of that in front of you, you can't react quick enough. It's going to rip the wheel off, as you've seen with DC. Very unfortunate. And very lucky that also he didn't roll over as well. It's Riken. Kimi Riken and Pitts on lap 12, then. He is the first of the cars to come in, so the predictions up and down the paddock were wrong in terms of how much fuel Raikkonen was carrying. It was a good lap yesterday in qualifying to put himself fourth. He did go out first in qualifying. He had to be aggressive to get himself into the hunt. Where will he feed back into the picture? Probably somewhere just in front of Jensen Button, if he's lucky. Can't really see from that shot, but... Uh, no, Button goes through on a three-stopper. Here you can see Alonso. This is Dornbos on the outside. I'm coming through, he says to the Dutchman. And, well, and you're in a position like he is. He's got nothing really to lose. He's trying to get some points to salvage his position. He knows Raikkonen's looking strong here this afternoon. And it's exactly the problem that we spoke about earlier. Onto the back of the guy here on this small straight. And that's one of the biggest problems. You see, look how much he gets there in terms of braking difference. Nearly run into the back of Carter guy, and surely he must have had a problem there. The speed differential was great. Very lucky fuel in the car. There's no doubt about that. It could well be the last man to come into the pits. What about Michael Schumacher, the race leader? Here he comes into the pits. Ferrari are waiting for him. And... Uh, he comes and hits his mark. Slight advantage for him as well. He comes straight into the pit box. Doesn't have to drive around anybody. That's worth a, a fraction of a second to him. Small front wing adjustment. Quite a bit of fuel going into that car. No watch on it, but I'd say that was quite a bit of fuel. And you can see that Juan Montoya has taken the lead. The McLaren goes through then. At the bottom of the frame. Here's Michael Schumacher. Ralph Schumacher, who was in third place, has dived into the pits. That puts Kimi Rock. And in comes Raikkonen on lap 22. Jensen Button still out. Beg your pardon, Montoya, sorry. There's Montoya, the only one not to come in, I beg your pardon. He comes into the, uh, the pits. The race leader, he's got 20 seconds lead over Michael Schumacher, 21.9 over Kimi Raikkonen. It's going to be very close, this. Long old slug of fuel going in. There are the Ferrari 
Ferrari and the McLaren. They go past the start finish straight and it looks like he's going to rejoin behind them. Certainly behind Michael Schumacher and behind Kimi Raikkonen. He wasn't able to do enough then, Mark. Uh, not quite enough, but I think this is all according to plan. The first corner has now is now right up behind his teammate and Barrichello makes a mistake and runs wide on the exit of one. That lets one of the Renaults through. Alonso then, I think, will still be behind him. Yes, he is. And Alonso getting him into turn one. Well, that's coming into the last corner. I think Rubens basically missed his braking point. Just then got onto the outside, a dirty part of the circuit. One car rejoined down in 13th place. And this will put him back out behind Felipe Massa. There we are, Massa and Villeneuve. Those two are 12th and 13th. So Barrichello is inside his old mate Massa. The man who supposedly is going to take his seat at Ferrari. And Raikkonen now is on one. He was the first man to make his pit stop on lap 11, was Kimi Raikkonen. Three laps before Schumacher, but at a different strategy. And it's, it, I guess Ross Braun thought that Schumacher might have the pace with a bit less fuel to, to get away from Raikkonen. It hasn't worked out like that. These are critical laps then for Kimi Raikkonen as Michael Schumacher rejoins. This is where I think McLaren made that strategy change. I'm sure they weren't anticipating coming in on 11 laps with Kimi, but I think they read the race and saw what Ferrari are up to, and now they've made the calculation. This is where he needs to make the break. And I'm interested to see what Raikkonen can really lay down in lap time now. Crucially, he's got back out in front. Of well, Raikkonen was very, very quick on the first and second sectors. He only had one lap more fuel than did Michael Schumacher. This is going to be very close, Ted Kravitz. This needs to be absolutely perfect but the McLaren boys are the best in the pit lane. Kimi stops. It's exactly on his marks. The fuel nozzle settles into the car. Kimi gives it absolute. Oh, that's a short fill. This one is going to be close. Well, Michael Schumacher exits the final corner. It was a very, very quick stop indeed. And there you go. Kimi Raikkonen comes back out of the pits. And just listen to the Finnish fans around this racetrack. There's thousands of them travel down to this race every year. They started with Mika Hakkinen and they've carried... He's going slowly. No, I don't believe it. Surely not. Surely not. Another McLaren problem. There's Raikkonen. Second place. He's going to nick the lead off Juan Montoya who's slowing. Raikkonen dives down the inside and Juan Montoya in the lead. Looks like he's going to be out of the Grand Prix. McLaren. There always seems to be a but with McLaren. It's an outstanding car. It's an outstanding team with two outstanding drivers, but. Uh, Montoya had been slowing on previous laps, James, and the uh, couple of laps that we've just seen, his lap time was significantly down on what Raikkonen and Michael Schumacher have been doing. And just to make a small correction, Dornbos is in the Minardi that says only one Minardi left on the circuit. Juan Montoya, as Massa has a problem in the pits with the uh, Sauber, Juan Montoya is talking to Luis Goodman. Juan Pablo, we know you had to uh, fly some new parts out for your gearbox um, because you had a problem with it uh, earlier in the weekend. Do you think that's what's going on? Behind his brother. What's this? Fisichella? Is that the same incident or yet another at the same corner? Anyway, back up. Well, Montoya led this race, but he lost it from a technical problem and making up very, very much for what happened last weekend at Hockenheim. Kimi Raikkonen takes victory in the Hungarian Grand Prix, his fourth win of the 2005 season, the sixth of his career. It makes up for Hockenheim very sweetly because his main rival, Alonso, is scoring no points this afternoon. So from 36 points, the lead is cut to 26. Ferrari look there, they're a bit quicker. And Toyota looked like they're a bit quicker as well. Renault struggling here. Is that a problem for the future or just a Hungary specific problem? Out of the final few corners comes second place man Ferrari's Michael Schumacher and Toyota's Ralph Schumacher in third place across the line. Ralph unable to have a go at his brother. 